In 2015, Acura introduced the TLX, an entry-level luxury sports sedan. It replaced two other Acura models, the smaller TSX and the slightly larger TL. We liked it for its comfort, its reliability, as well as its value. But it never really was competitive against the established German rivals. I sort of considered it luxury adjacent because it didn't have the performance or excitement and interior quality of what you'd expect from BMW, Audi, or Mercedes. That may change with the all new 2021 Acura TLX when it goes on sale this fall. Prices will start right in the mid $30,000 range for the base TLX. You're gonna get a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that's good for 272 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. So it's gonna feel more responsive, a lot more exciting. It's gonna be mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission that drives the front wheels. Acura's super handling all wheel drive will be available as an option, and it's the new fourth generation SHAWD. That means it'll be able to send up to 70% of available power to the rear wheels, which is an increase of about 40% over last generation. Also, the response between shifting power between front axle and rear axle will also be quickened up in the order of about 30%. The translation, this new TLX will put a lot more power to the pavement. This new TLX is all new from the ground up with a much stiffer platform it's working with. Gone are the front strut suspension replaced by a double wishbone setup for better handling. Sounds good, right? Well, just wait until springtime. That's when the Type S TLX comes out. The TLX Type S gets a three liter turbocharged V6 with much more power. Acura isn't going into details just yet, but if I were a betting man, I'd say between 350 and 400 horsepower. One can hope. The Type S will be the first Type S from Acura that's eligible for the super handling all wheel drive. In addition to that, the Type S gets upgraded brakes. You have four piston Brembo calipers with larger rotors. The brake system itself is derived from the NSX and its electro servo system. It eliminates the mechanical contact between the pedal and the brakes. It's brake by wire, but at least in the NSX, we couldn't tell the difference. And that's a good thing. Sadly, I'm not allowed to drive either of these today, so we're gonna have to wait a little while to see how all these improvements stack up. We do have plenty of time to talk about everything else, so let's start with exterior styling. Up front is a familiar Acura grille, not far from the 2018 refresh of the last generation TLX. There is an integrated radar emitter here for the frontal collision as well as adaptive cruise control. And to me, it looks a little tacked on, but it does make sense because it has one of the widest spreads of a radar unit out there. There are also some really nice, deep, sharp creases in the hood that converge all at the top of the grille, just like the last generation TLX. The TLX's profile best illustrates what's new with it. Right off the bat, you can see it has a much longer hood. Designers will refer to this as the dash to axle distance. That's from the bottom of this roof pillar to the center of the front wheel. It's much, much longer than the previous generation TLX. Along the side, we have a lot of creases in surface treatments to break up some of the sheet metal over here. In particular, this crease here that starts just behind the front wheel travels all the way down and over these rear haunches with the door handles following them. These rear haunches are also much wider than before. They lend it a much sportier appearance, which I'm all for. Along with all these surface treatments, it's just bigger overall. There's 3.7 inches longer when it comes to wheelbase. That's the distance between the front and rear axle. Also, the roof line has been lowered about six tenths of an inch. Overall, it gives it a sportier, more hunkered down appearance. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the four series Grand Coupe from BMW, and that's a compliment. There are also echoes of BMW in the rear taillights and fascia. In particular, I like these cutouts here in the bumper that break up some of that space. They suggest that they're air extractors, but they're just holding reflectors. Now, you get two thin tailpipes 
on the regular TLX, but on the Type S, you get four round pipes. The width of the car increases by about 2.2 inches, and the wheels are also pushed a little further apart. The result, a slightly bigger trunk at 13 and a half cubic feet, and it's a very usable space with remote releases for the seat backs. Overall, I think this new TLX is far more attractive than the last generation. It has the right proportions to give it the sporty character the designers were going for. But let's see how that translates to the interior. Inside, the TLX gets a major modern makeover. The dash is much deeper with deeper creases with the screen plopped right on top. At the top of the center stack, we have a lot of controls that are logically organized. We have climate control buttons right here at the top of the center stack. Right underneath, a lot of the drive functions. And then the infotainment controller is right where your hand rests on the center console. The big dial in the middle is for drive modes, whether it's comfort, normal, or sport. Then there's also a new individual mode where you can fine tune it to your particular taste. That means you can have a softer ride from the available adaptive dampers while still enjoying the response from the engine in sport mode. The Type S will further benefit from a Sport Plus mode. I've never been a fan of Honda's gear selector, and, well, it's the same here as it is in a Honda. Now, it actually is fairly easy to use once you're used to it. I get it. But to me, it takes up just about as much space as a regular lever, and it's not quite as attractive either. On top of that, it's the same shifter or something similar that you'd get in a Honda Accord. And as much as I like the Honda Accord, I expected something just a little more special in the Acura. It's likely most people will have a bigger problem with the infotainment system though. They're using a touchpad here, much like what Lexus does. And Lexus's system is regarded as one of the worst in the industry. According to our last rating of the Acura RDX though, this does function better than the Lexus, but it does take some time to get used to, and even then, it's more difficult to use than a standard dial or touchscreen. The display is nice and bright and big at 10.2 inches, and it's right in my sight line. That means less distraction. There's also an available head-up display right in front of me. Other tech includes a Wi-Fi hotspot and remote monitoring and control over the car through a smartphone app. It also comes with the Acura Watch suite of advanced safety features. These include frontal collision mitigation, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic sign reader, and a drowsy driver monitor. In other news, the TLX debuts a new front passenger airbag with three chambers. When it deploys, it looks a lot like a catcher's mitt and functions much the same. It's able to control the motion of that front passenger just in case things go horribly wrong. We're in the top trim of the TLX, which means it gets this nice leather covered dashboard. Otherwise, it's kind of a vinyl that's well textured. There's also some really nice open pour real wood here on the trim on the sides. And it's one of my favorites. For me, if it's wood trim, it has to be open pour and matte. There's a decent amount of storage too. These cup holders are well placed and there's a very smartly located wireless charging pad here. Now you can put your phone down and still close the lid and it's still somewhat visible. It will have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. The bin here is pretty well sized as are the pockets in the doors. So on a long road trip, you're not gonna be running out of places to store your personal effects. Of course, we're in a sedan, so I'll have to check out the back seat as well. I'm pleasantly surprised by the amount of space I have in the back seat here. And that's impressive for these four-door coupes that are permeating the market. My head is just barely brushing the headliner. I don't have that much space under the seat, but my feet are in a good position and I have tons of knee room. Outward visibility is also good, so you'll never feel claustrophobic back here. The first generation Acura TLX didn't have a shot at taking on BMW or Audi, but the second generation redesign definitely has some strong potential. Of course, we won't know for sure until we get to drive it for ourselves, so keep checking back here 
for drive impressions over the next couple months. Until then, for more information on the TLX and all of its competition, head on over to Edmunds.com. To see more videos like this, hit subscribe.